Okay. You guess what I said. Uh, 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 very good. So we are here in the business and economic session, and we will look at um, how to better connect and how to better integrate this region, to look at what is at stake and to look also on how do we actually get there. As you've seen, I'm your humble moderator. I will try to guide you through two and a half hours of uh, intense work. Also leave half an hour for the coffee break. Now, uh, maybe some more logistic housekeeping uh, uh, information uh, for the languages. You can follow this in Macedonian, Channel 1, Albanian, Channel 2, English, Channel 3. I also uh, should tell you that I've been instructed by the organizers to call the speakers only by their names and by their surnames. So don't be surprised that uh, I look uh, unpolite. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and actually, without any ado, I immediately invite both Fatmir Bitiki and Fatmir Besimi for their opening remarks. Fatmir Bitiki, the floor is yours. But you, you used both the name and surname, huh? Eh? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two Fatmir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Defa, a respected panelist, respected guest. Uh, today, really, I'm honored uh, to be the chair in this early morning economic session together with my colleague, Fatmir Bessimi, the Minister of Finance, and as well to be together with you. It brings me uh, such joy to see what constructive and open dialogue can do. First, it led to PRESPA agreement a couple of years ago, and today it brings us all together in this forum in a stage when we are trying to recover after pandemics. I think that this is the power of openness and mutual respect. It can only bring prospect and mutual growth. And this is what we are all going to talk about today, the future of our region. Western Balkan region can be seen as a set of several countries, different ones. Someone says six, someone says eight, or even ten. But I usually want to say that it can be seen as one, as well, with a common history, similar economic structure and similar problems. Coronavirus has showed that there are no borders. Immigration actually does not stop in the Balkans or on the EU borders. Amazon actually threats traditional shops, not only in Ljubljana, but as well it threats all of us in Zagreb, Sarajevo, Pristina, Belgrade, Tirana, and as well in Skopje. And as well, air pollution does not stop at the cross-border points. It's all around. As we are entering the post-COVID period of recovery, we have a unique chance to build back better and together. So let's put our efforts into, as I say, regional competitiveness instead of regional competition. As we work towards com common regional market, a stepping stone towards EU single market that will strengthen our economic integration. Lastly, at the board meeting of Western Balkan 6 Chamber Investment Forum, I took the initiative for creating a unique foreign direct investment subsidy program for Western Balkan 6, but as well creating strong value, regional value chain, 
which will enhance our competitiveness far more than any of us can do it individually. The need for nearshoring is a lesson learned from the past pandemic year, when the far away Asian supply chain has been said that it's hardly accessible. Lastly, as a government in the newly adopted inv intervention investment plan, we have foreseen a budget of more than 2.7 billion euro for building new roads, reconstruction of the present ones, and modernizing the ra railway infrastructure. Completing of pan-European corridor is one of the top priorities of our country. This together with the green corridors is essential in achieving the goals of the common regional market. Individually, we are small countries with great aspirations, but together we are a great region with even greater prosperity. Togetherness is a key to greatness, they say. And I don't want this today to be just a one-way conversation, but an open dialogue so we can exchange vision and inspirations, because this today is not just about Fatme from North Macedonia. It's as well for Dusan from Serbia, Arben from Albania, Sofia from Montenegro, Rosafa from Kosovo, and Yanis, or anybody else from Greece, Bulgaria. It's for all of 18 million people of our region, so we should talk and create our future together, and I'm looking forward for a fruitful discussion. I strongly believe that regional competitiveness will strengthen the resilience in, of the region, will bring prosperity for our citizens. By creating a stronger labor market, will bring prosperity and future for the economies, and at the same time, it will prepare them for entering the challenging EU, big EU market and the global market. Today, I am really looking forward for the next speakers. As I said at the beginning, before we start, I do have some expectation, and it was a good expectation, but as we have two chairs, both of us bearing the same name, and I don't know if you know actually the meaning of the name Fatmir, it's a good luck. Uh -huh. So you have good luck square. So I think this is a good start for the session. Thank you to you. I would note, if I may, Mr. Minister, that all those people you named are actually from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Fatme Bitiki. Good luck to uh, uh, Fatme Bezimi now for his Thank part. You. Thank you, Defa. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really pleased to see this uh, conference starting, de facto starting uh, in the morning with this panel and one parallel one in the other rooms, but in the afternoon, the official part. But what I would like to say, if, and I guess it's the same in the States and uh, in Germany and other countries, uh, you can recognize the day from the morning. If it's sun, maybe the day will go, which we cannot say it's assured in these climate changes, but still, it's a good saying. And this day, I see it started to very good conversation, very ambitious, from expectations to ambitions, and uh, we have very positive uh, thinking since uh, the beginning. And I see many friends here uh, from the region. And also, I know them personally, so I'm very pleased to see all of them here together. In Ohrid, we used to say the city, the pearl in, in the Balkans because uh, of the uh, UNESCO city, the lake, and uh, the tourism, the heritage, cult cultural heritage. So talking about the, the topic of, of, this, uh, of this conference, how to get connected the region and integrated. Actually, uh, if you look back in the history and look forward what we can achieve, we can really be very clear about that, what this region has been and what is always it has benefited when there has been this cooperation in the region for different purposes, but mainly for trade and cultural exchange, we have benefited the most. 
And uh, what uh, my dear colleague and friend uh, uh, Fatmir also mentioned about the, the importance of, of uh, this cooperation and wh where we want to, to, to be in the future. I want also to, to add on this that to add on complement what Fatmir was saying about the COVID. Let's put it like this, uh, the COVID, the positive side of the COVID is that it uh, hit our conscious, our collective conscious. What are the challenges that we face? Those challenges are not anymore only national. Those challenges are global. And we can start from our countries, from our neighbors, and the region, and then globally. So if we see the challenges, it's important how we respond to these challenges. And uh, the response definitely is not national. It must be uh, global. Why we ha were uh, successful in a very short period of time to, to get, uh, I might say, although there was some, were some delays, but in a year time we responded effectively, in relative terms again, to COVID. And it was because all international community was collaborating, was ex were exchanging information, and even in policies that we are taking, we are helping each other. We are learning from each other. So this is the strength of uh, togetherness. And this is what we are looking forward from this conference, uh, learning, exchanging views, and looking beyond the uh, challenges we face today, looking for tomorrow, looking at the opportunities. So there are many opportunities in the region, working together and coordinating our activities. So the point is how we get there. Maybe we know where we want to go. Uh, but how do we get there? And one is these kind of initiatives, enhancing cooperation. The second is the infrastructure and all policies that means free movements. Europe has done several initiatives for the region. United States has supported many of them. We have uh, Ms. Brego representing one of these initiatives in the region. So this is uh, where we want uh, to go and how we can get there. But we agreed, Sadefa, that four minutes are for this beginning address. So I'm reaching these four minutes. I would like to say that uh, we'll have discussions uh, maybe during the, the panel, questions and answers, but because this is a, a long journey, that, uh, the challenges are big enough. So to go, and I will end up with that saying, maybe you can go uh, fast if you are alone, but if you are together, you can go long, far longer way. So this is what this challenge is now. This is a big challenge. It's not a short-term run. This is a long-term run and very ambitious agenda where we can, what we aim. And maybe we will achieve this if we work together. So thank you for, for this uh, uh, initial uh, address. And maybe later on, we come back again. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Fatima Besimi, and uh, the plea for this long journey together. After these openings, uh, let's now turn to the key speech, setting the scene for the deliberations of our session. And uh, I don't have to introduce anybody. Uh, uh, everybody knows him. It's a great privilege uh, to welcome Matthew Palmer here. So the floor is yours. Thanks very much. Thanks to you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you to the organizers of this year's Press Forum. It um, was the first of what I anticipate will be an annual event and one of the real, I expect, highlights of the conference season. Uh, I do want to begin by acknowledging the region's tremendous work on building connections and deepening integration during what has been an immensely difficult year for all of us. Green Lanes, the endorsement of the Common Regional Market Action Plan, and the Green Agenda for the Western Balkans, progress on 5G security and digital standards, and implementation of the Rome Like Home initiative. I'm especially pleased to be here to contribute to this forum today alongside some of the people who made all of this possible. But there remains a lot of work to do to fully realize this region's enormous potential 
Leaders must make more than a public commitment to economic growth and regional cooperation. They must take real actions. They must press ahead with difficult reforms. They must work constructively to resolve difficult political issues internally and with neighbors, to strengthen their multi-ethnic democracies and judiciaries, and to move towards a more prosperous, integrated future. This is a point made repeatedly in the Commission's economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans. The United States applauds the European Commission's recent announcement of an agreement on pre-accession assistance, which will finance much of that economic and investment plan. I'll echo here what German Foreign Minister Maas recently said. It is critical that the EU stand by its commitments to the region. This includes advancing accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania and delivering, delivering visa liberalization for Kosovo. We're disappointed that the issue of IGCs for North Macedonia and Albania was not resolved, despite the Portuguese presidencies and like-minded European partners' strong advocacy and the reasonable solutions that were put forward. Because frankly, this affects our bottom line too. These delays have weakened our collective US-EU influence and the ability to advance shared goals in the region, including not just normalization of relations between Serbia and Kosovo and constitutional and EU-related reforms in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but broader regional interests as well. As I said, there's a lot of work to do. Moreover, as our geopolitical competitors aggressively seek to undermine US-EU credibility, and the region itself doubts the integrity of our collective commitments, the stakes continue to grow. I've seen repeated criticisms of the US role over the years. Some pundits say the United States is too heavy-handed and engaged, while others say we're, we're not engaged enough, and that means usually that we've, we've gotten the balance about right. <laughs> the fact is that the United States has been consistent in pursuing its overarching goals. Our long-standing vision for the region is a region at peace with itself, at peace with its neighbors, stable, prosperous, and integrated into the European and Euro-Atlantic framework. What gives me hope is that this is not just the US vision for the Western Balkans, but it is nearly indistinguishable from what our European allies and partners also want. Even more important is that this vision is the vision explicitly articulated by the countries of the Western Balkans themselves. This common vision is our collective strength and should serve as our guide as we redouble efforts to bring the Western Balkans closer to the European Union. We must not lose sight of this goal or we risk failing in the decades long endeavor to complete a Europe whole, free, and at peace as part of a strong transatlantic family. Yet, despite our common vision, and as important as our individual roles may be, we need to challenge ourselves to make the Western Balkans much more of a driver in rather than an object of transatlantic cooperation. So how do we get there? How do we facilitate and indeed impel regional integration and increase connectedness? In no particular order, I'd like to suggest the following. The region's leaders must take firm ownership of their European future and generate the internal pressure needed to not only achieve collective progress in the near term, but actively reverse the slide into transnational or hybrid regime territory. Otherwise, regional economic cooperation and sustainable long-term economic recovery will remain perpetually out of reach. As part of this, the leaders of the region must create and seize opportunities now to resolve through dialogue and compromise differences that hold back their countries and peoples from achieving their full potential. Unless it is inclusive, this can only remain half measures. To this end, the United States has urged Kosovo to approach its neighbors with a positive spirit and urge Kosovo's neighbors to engage Kosovo in the same way. With equal importance, the United States has urged Serbia to make a political commitment to the entire region's economic development. Leaving out Kosovo handicaps the whole region while a rising tide can lift all boats. This means Belgrade engaging with Pristina on real and substantive issues vital to inclusive regional economic integration and growth. The EU facilitated dialogue which enjoys the unequivocal support of the United States is the primary political framework for resolving differences between Kosovo and Serbia. But nothing in the dialogue should prevent pragmatic, depoliticized solutions between and amongst reasonable interlocutors. Deeper business connections that will thrive on the four freedoms can produce more of what the people of the region demand, jobs and economic security. 
which will help to overcome the zero-sum mentality that too often holds the region back. It is for these reasons that the United States believes efforts towards establishing a common regional market are important steps on the path towards EU membership. All the countries of the region must work together to realize these goals and bring their perspectives and their collective strengths to this project. Agreements such as on ID-only travel and on mutual recognition of academic and professional qualifications will build transparency, trust, and rapid opportunities for commerce. I urge all parties to take these agreements seriously, to see them as stepping stones towards greater alignment with the EU, easing their European integration while energizing their societies and giving their entrepreneurs the tools to do what they do best. Similarly, Balkan countries must reform their energy sectors. Diversified sources and clean technologies will not only bring positive economic benefits, but will also bolster domestic and regional energy security while helping the region simultaneously meet its climate commitments. The tangible benefits of cooperation are even more compelling in a region where, despite admirable GDP growth, citizens are most concerned about the economy and jobs and where they're voting with their feet. The last decade has seen the region lose a substantial number of highly skilled workers to jobs elsewhere, some of which they may even be overqualified for but they're in places where corruption and state capture do not threaten their children's future. Next to the economy, the region's citizens are most concerned about the rule of law and corruption. You will know that on June 3rd, President Biden declared countering corruption a core United States national security interest. Countering corruption is fundamentally about preserving and strengthening democracy. When political leaders steal from their country's citizens or flout the rule of law and an independent judiciary, Economic growth slows, inequality widens, equitable access to services is undercut, markets are distorted, and trust in government plummets. Reforms, therefore, must not be designed just to revive the post-COVID economy. They must also be about strengthening democratic institutions to make them more independent, more transparent, and more accountable. In conclusion, and a mentor of mine once taught me to always say in conclusion is it gives your audience hope. I'd like to note Macedonia's historic PRESPA agreement with Greece and its agreement for good neighborly relations with Bulgaria as model examples of seeking greater regional engagement for the benefit of all citizens. The government of North Macedonia is focused on implementing the necessary economic and political reforms at home to attract high quality investors from abroad. It plays an active and productive role in regional economic initiatives because it knows that a market of 18 million can be far more attractive than a market of two million. It will use its strong partnership with Greece to secure its energy security and use connections with its neighbors to help guarantee theirs. We're on the cusp of great things in this region. I'm excited to, to be here with you today and I'm excited to see what the years ahead hold in store. Thank you for the opportunity, thank you for your attention, and thank you, Mr. Moderator, for organizing the panel. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Matthew Palmer, for this broad coverage of setting the scene. And uh, the, applause, the applause has uh, told it all. Um, now we come um, to uh, the podium, to the speakers uh, here on the podium. Before giving you the floor, just one remark um, on timing. Um, we have a time constraint. Um, we should leave, and I think that's also a very important time for interaction and discussion. And then we also have the coffee break. Um, not only for refreshment, but also, and I think this is uh, very important, for personal exchange. And that's something we have been missing so much uh, in the last COVID times. So uh, by the organizers, you have allocated four minutes. So please respect this. And um, it's football times, right? And uh, in order to increase compliance, <laughs> I've prepared uh, a yellow card uh, and a red card. Wait, does that mean you get uh, thrown off the panel? Uh, no. No, 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 no
So once you approach the four minutes, you might see this, and beyond you see this. That's, uh, that's why it's pink, it's not red. Right, right? yeah. yeah? It's pink. Well, that's the only thing that I got in the shop. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't go to the UEFA shop, so... Uh, so if, if you get the pink one, you're not allowed to participate on the next panel? Is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Jokes aside, I uh, now have the pleasure to invite... Uh, I have the pleasure to invite Melinda Regu, and uh, you are the person that symbolizes uh, uh, the uh, regional common market, so the floor is yours. Thank you uh, very much, Walter. Thank you uh, for uh, inviting uh, dear uh, participants, dear Fatmirs, to both of you. Uh, first and foremost, happy 1st of July. From uh, today, we'll celebrate uh, the free roaming agreement in the region. And uh, modesty aside, I think that we should all take pride and uh, be happy that we all made this story happen. We facilitated and eliminated barriers, uh, borders, tariffs of mobile telephony in the region. And we are looking forward to do the same with the freedom of movement of people, goods as well, and uh, to continue whenever, and uh, even that this is not going to be an easy path forward, but to continue whenever is possible to have a deeper economic integration in the region. Uh, happy 1st of July to Greece. We'll be chairing by, by uh, today the Southeast Cooperation Process for a full year. Definitely happy 1st of July to Slovenia who will start chairing uh, the EU. Uh, so I think a lot of, uh, of uh, events to celebrate. Uh, now, before that pink cartoon comes uh, uh, into my face, uh, let me uh, just uh, try to, uh, let's say, resume a bit my, uh, my sayings uh, for, for today. Uh, what do we see in the Western Balkans happening today, uh, or the necessity that uh, the region has uh, I would uh, put those in three main lines. First, accelerating growth. Second, greening that growth. And third, membership to EU value chains. I know that you are about to think membership to EU, but that goes without saying. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to repeat it anymore now in, uh, in uh, North Macedonia, especially for at least uh, uh, some days, because I know how your feelings are on that, on that regard. Uh, given these three main uh, items, you know that the region as everywhere in the world has suffered a lot from last year's uh, pandemic. Uh, I'm not going to repeat figures in here, you can read uh, all of you the reports, but I think that we have a very good instrument and tool uh, that uh, rightly uh, Matt mentioned, which is common regional market. The common regional market, uh, as I keep saying, it's not the law of nature but it's the common endeavor of uh, uh, all the leaders of this region, citizens, business community, who supported the idea of building up an action plan to have one common regional market in the region, same model as the EU single market. Again, the common regional market is based on those famous four freedoms that are part or uh, the same model of the EU single market, and uh, it's enlarged with the digital agenda, which is quite important. Uh, with the industrial one uh, and uh, then continuing with other uh, pillars that are quite important uh, as well to be part of the common regional market on the investment and so on. Uh, but business uh, community as uh, reported in, our, uh, uh, in the latest Balkan barometer, uh, they uh, report that they have been selling only domestically during uh, the last years which is not strange given that our economies are dominated by micro and small uh, enterprises. Only 7% of small and medium enterprises reported uh, the exported to the Western Balkans, while uh, only 6% of them said that they are exporting in EU and 1% elsewhere. So uh, keeping in mind that the EU is the biggest uh, uh, trade and investment partner of the Western Balkans 6 and the economies heavily depend on the EU economy. Value and supply chains uh, should be re-established and investments acquire strategic thought on the value uh, chains. There is uh, 
let's say, enough money leveraging IPA3 coming into the region or the economic investment plan. But uh, we all know that that will never be enough. We've been uh, uh, reading and, and making calculations these days only uh, for the broadband, while uh, the whole uh, investment of IPA that will hopefully start by the end of the year will be 500 million euros. Only in the investment on broadband for Albania is 600 million euros. So money will never be enough to have real connectivity and uh, uh, like to accelerate the growth uh, in, uh, in the region. I mentioned green uh, uh, economy. We are proud that by last year as well, RCC is coordinating not only the common regional market, but green agenda in the Western Balkans. Again, when it comes to the green agenda in, uh, in the region, this is not going to be, to be an easy goal. Uh, the Western Balkans power system predominantly relies on lignite units where 90% are older than 30 years and 40% are even older than 40 years. The 16 thermal power plants in the Western Balkans produce more hazardous emissions than 250 coal power plants on the territory of the European Union. And it is now clear how the countries will need to finance a lot on the social, environmental and energy costs of closing those coal mines, but it is not clear where we are going to find that money to do that. And this is the heart of the decarbonization uh, efforts. Based on the calculations investment in the case of Lignite Exit through 2050, amount to around 38, 40 billion euros for Western Balkans. Said that, now again, I uh, need to mention why it's quite important the Europeanization of the value chains. I see the red card. No, 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 it's, no, 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 no. No, it's yellow, sorry. It's yellow. Uh, it's okay, yellow. It's, it's then it's better. Sometimes linear. it's better when you have problems with eyes because, uh, <laughs> because you don't recognize the colors. So the Europeanization of, uh, of the value chains is of crucial importance for the Western Balkans economies by reason of geographical proximity. On, based on the existing structures of our economies and ongoing EU accession and alignment uh, processes. So, said that, I do hope that we'll not only have the political leadership quite keen uh, and respectful to the commitments uh, that they sell themselves endorse, but as well, I hope that uh, we will uh, uh, as well have not only the support, uh, uh, let's say, the one that is, that is quite uh, generous coming from the EU in terms of grants, but first and furthermore, we need to change our structural economies in order to have uh, uh, some uh, uh, more, let's say, good loans, and as well to direct those in those areas that are quite important, digital mostly and foremost for the moment. Thank you. No pink card? Thank you so much, uh, thank you so much, and uh, uh, this is uh, compliance and uh, enjoyment, so, uh, uh, and it was enjoyable uh, uh, to listen to you uh, and this balance of uh, achievements, but all the big challenges uh, in front of us uh, for this uh, region and common market. We now come... Um, to more uh, something like the business perspective, the business perspective, uh, um, and uh, to see uh, what are the attitudes, what are the expectations of the business uh, community. And uh, it's my pleasure to ask uh, Anthony Peshev, uh, who has a double role. He's now going to intervene, but he will also be the rapporteur for all uh, the uh, session, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. First, also I would like to thank organizers for the uh, opportunity to be part of this panel. By my opinion, one of the most important panels, be because without economy, all other political initiatives are not going to be valuable and is going to be without reason. You know, in general, the economy is the only reason why the governments do exist, because this is the motor of existence of every single country. Our region is covered with a lot of prejudice. And today I prepared a short speech which I called They Are to Dream. They are to dream because dreams are going to guide you to the changes. They are to change 
because changes are going to guide you to the great actions. They are to act and create. Because only the action may, ch may change the world. History is going to remember those who were acting and creating. Nobody will remember those who opposed and tried to stop the actions and destroy creations. Prespa agreement is, so no is synonymous for this great philosophy. Those who were brave to step into unknown territory, to dream, to change, to act, gave us a reason to gather today and talk about the future of the region. When in 2014, your co commission, headed by Mr. Jean-Claude Juncker, announced five years moratorium of further enlargement of EU, countries of the regions were under the cold shower. This was a situation in which all their hopes for the fast Europe integration were destroyed without logical explanation and without any visible alternative to this process. And when there was a complete dis uh, dis desperation about this process, Frau Merkel appeared with something which today we know all as a Berlin process, initiative which path a completely new approach to this very sensitive issue. This proposal was simple and clear. Countries of the region should try to build their relations in the way as if they are part of the European Union. The message was clear. Build the region without borders. Build the region as the global economic territory. Start to live in the manner different from the old Balkan way. I'm proud that the economical chambers of the region responded immediately. And in a period shorter than one year, the West Balkan Six Chamber Investment Forum was established by the major chambers organizations from Albania, Bosnia, uh, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia, and Serbia. This was a logical and easy step for chambers, believe me, from the region, because we have already very good relations between us. And whenever the political problems appeared on the borders, only chambers have the open phones between each other. During all those years, this organization, this regional chamber umbrella, not only managed to survive, but it also contributed to the faster development and uh, uh, integration of, of, of the region. It built strong links between the business operators and tried to build foundation for the integrated economic space, territory without borders, customs, and non-tariff barriers. The results are visible and measurable. In the period 2014-2020, regional GDP growth 28% from 77 billion euros in 2014 to 101 billion euros in 2019. Total value of the foreign direct investment in the region reached the level of 35 billion euros. GDP per capita reached the level of 5,600 euros, which is growth of a significant 31%, but still much lower than, uh, than the average level of European Union, of European 27 countries. So, I can further illustrate the benefits of regional economic cooperation, but I saw the yellow uh, <laughs> signal there. And I am encourage you to, to visit the website of this organization where you're going to find very analytical data of all these aspects. I hope that the governments and political authorities are, go, uh, are going to recognize the importance of the regional cooperation and follow the steps toward the political uh, unification of the region, converting it to the region without borders, open political issues, without conflicts and tensions of any kind. This is the only way which will show that the de facto geographical part of the Europe is going to become the un uh, real part of the European Union which is a real desire for all these countries for more than three decades. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we follow on uh, with uh, Nebi Hocha. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I will continue in English. <coughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, conference and uh, the fact that uh, the first panel starts with economy, it shows that the economy is the crucial part of 
all our life and uh, generally the, the situation in the region. To have a better economy, for sure, is very important to break down all the barriers between our countries. We are small countries, but in fact, we are so far between each other. Why I say this? Because between our capitals, for instance, Kopje to Tirana, we have only 159 kilometers difference. We need five hour driving. Skopje, Pristina as well is less than 80 kilometers. We need now between our cities or more or less about two hours, considering the part that Kosovo already finished their highway till our border and we still need for many years to build highway between our cities. This is uh, the, the, the sickness of our uh, uh, mentality because we need to be synchronized between all our institutions and our governments because in one side they build the highway and in the other side we still have uh, ways that are not in the same level. To have a better business conditions as well we need also to change a lot of things in our countries because we need to start uh, uh, working against organized crime, cooperating between our countries also is very important and for that reason that citizens of our uh, countries need to have better conditions for life just to stay in our country and don't emigrate in uh, North and Europe. As well as I mentioned, the other things that we need for better economic and stability is macroeconomic stability in our country, skills, professional education, and the one important thing uh, that we have a summit a few days ago in Kosovo is uh, the importance of the professional education uh, people that uh, we need in our private sector. In our country, we have unemployment around 17%. In Kosovo, it's more than 26%. But in the other side, business need and miss the skilled people for their uh, companies. So we need to have uh, big reforms in our institutions, to have better educational systems, comparing the needs of the business. Also, for better cooperation between our uh, countries in Western Balkans, we need to harmonize the custom rates and tariffs between all the countries in the region. Cooperation also in scientific and technical level between our countries is as well important. And these agreements that would systematically regulate norms of cooperation a trade between our country. I saw the, the Apple badge in the uh, Vice Premier uh, uh, jacket, and uh, he reminded me that uh, we as a country, and especially the region of Prespa, is very famous for Apple, apples. And uh, as well, why we as a country don't be complementar. As I said, we are small countries to be together, to share our products, and in this case, to change this product with US Apple and to have better economy and compensation of our goods in the market. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for these uh, two business uh, um, views, very important. And uh, there is a bit of an uncertainty uh, whether uh, Mrs. Gris um, Vanuli uh, will nevertheless be able to join us. But, uh, okay, I, I think uh, we might take uh, uh, her if, uh, if she will come in the second part. She is here. She is here. So, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Just uh, take a seat, please. And uh, welcome, uh, Mrs. Atana Rizvanoli. Um, you have uh, four minutes, and uh, we have a bit of a football um, regime. Uh, so, in order not to waste any time, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to apologize for this uncertainty. I'm sorry, I was not, um, I had a different agenda and I thought that my panel, I would be in the second panel. Uh, but I just realized that I'm actually in the first panel while I had to attend another panel in the meantime. So <laughs> <laughs> I was called running. I was called running. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, I apologize for this. Um, dear uh, ministers, uh, political leaders, civil society representatives, uh, distinguished guests, it is a great pleasure for me uh, to be here today in the PRESPA Forum Dialogue representing Republic of Kosovo. I would like to start by thanking the Ma North Macedonian government, particularly the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Bujar Osmani, for bringing us all together to discuss such important topics regarding uh, regional economic and political cooperation. This uh, forum is being held at what we can hopefully call the verge of the post-pandemic era, uh, which was the greatest global health crisis and economic challenge we have faced since World War II. And uh, this period has not only shed light on the existing inequalities that we have among countries, but also uh, among uh, individuals with different socioeconomic backgrounds, but also among men and women and among countries as a whole. Uh, so uh, it has made us think also about the impact that we have uh, on our planet and it has had a few positive impacts like uh, reducing CO2 emissions and overconsumption in general and um, for um, many businesses on the other hand uh, it has also had a positive impact in that uh, it has provided the impetus for adaption and innovation particularly through digitalization we have definitely seen this in many sectors in kosovo whereby traditional sectors uh, have made uh, greater efforts to digitalize and to be able to provide services better quality services at a time of a pandemic uh, online um, the pandemic has also opened new perspectives for the regions in terms of uh, nearshoring opportunities as European firms look to build more diverse and resilient supply chains. And being a small region with merely 18 uh, million people in a combined GDP that is less than 40% of Poland, enhancing regional cooperation and inter integration will no, help, no doubt uh, help reap these benefits among other benefits. However, uh, regional economic cooperation and integration is not the holy grail that will address all our political and economic challenges in the region. A recent study by Vienna Institute, um, which has um, looked into how the region can uh, reap the benefits of such opportunities of nearshoring, has suggested that skilled labor investment in human capital and uh, improving infrastructure and governance would be the most important, important factors in being uh, able to make sure uh, that we use such opportunities. In this context, I would say that skilled labor and governance are major weaknesses in our countries across the region. And one indicator for this is the emigration that we've had of uh, young, and particularly young, skilled labor, which in, has, which in a recent forum uh, here in Skopje has been actually termed exodus of young, skilled individuals. 
And uh, we have actually um, researched the reason for this in Kosovo, and I think they hold across the region. The, re the reasons for this emigration uh, extend well beyond economic reasons, and they have to do with quality of life, with health care uh, services, education, rule of law, equal treatment by institutions, to name but a few. I think that is a clear message for us policymakers across the region, but also beyond, that uh, economic development and economic in integration alone is not sufficient. And without addressing these other issues, we are actually also undermining economic development and integration in self. Um, we can promote labor mobility, we can recognize each other's uh, qualifications and uh, remove work permits. However, uh, these initiatives will not reach their full potential if uh, our youth don't want to stay at home or in the region, but they are seeking the EU. Uh, similarly, in the absence of rule of law, legal certainty and a corruption-free business environment, initiatives improving capital mobility will not reach their full potential. Across the region, we need democratization, rule of law, anti-corruption, governmental accountability, freedom of media, because only this way we can unleash the economic potential of our countries and uh, improve the lives of our citizens. Uh, but also, we must keep in mind that economic cooperation and integration itself does not happen automatically and it does not happen in a vacuum. We are a small region, but a war-torn war one just 20, 30 years ago. And in order for a genuine cooperation and integration, we must address the prejudices that we have among each other. And for this, communication among our citizens is key. Um, this can only happen if we face the past and hold responsible those who are responsible for the dark side of our recent history so that we free ourselves, uh, our citizens, from assigning collective guilt and uh, responsibility to whole nations. Ironically, it is precisely these joint political and socio-economic challenges that they tend to make us overcome our differences and uh, realize our similarities in my um, personal experience. And there are particularly... <laughs> Um, there are particularly two uh, factors that I would say make me optimistic about the future of our countries individually but also of our region. And that is our youth, uh, which tends to be higher educated, more open-minded, and with the communication tools at hand to be able uh, to communicate better and to get to know each other better and um, uh, to actually make the cooperation and integration that we want work together. And the other one, particularly for Kosovo, I would say, is our diaspora. But I think this, to various extents, also applies to other countries in the region. Uh, we have strong diasporas, again, uh, many of them well-educated, with capital, who are willing to invest at home, especially if they uh, have trust in government and if they see that uh, economic conditions uh, for all investors uh, are improving because um, diaspora investors are at the end of the day also uh, foreign direct investors and they are seeking the same uh, opportunities and um, they have the same objectives and are looking for the same conditions. And uh, I think um, if we manage to create this po these uh, political and economic um, preconditions and if we can make use, best use of our youth educate them and make sure that we create the opportunities for them to remain at home rather than seek employment abroad, but also to attract uh, diaspora investment, then I think these can be two factors which can greatly affect uh, our economic development individually and jointly as a region. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks also for uh, the two focuses on, on, on youth and uh, diaspora. So this brings us actually uh, to the end of uh, the individual uh, interventions. So thanks again to, uh, for all the interventions, and thanks also for your understanding of the time constraints. So um, I think now it's time for some interaction, um, and uh, I will start this uh, with an other big thank you. Mm. And this is to uh, express our big gratitude to the platinum uh, partners of this Prespa Forum Dialogue. So uh, uh, thank you for your most valuable support. And I will uh, mention uh, in name, Maxtil, Ecolog, Braco, 
and tough. We are happy to have uh, representatives here and uh, uh, you uh, are invited uh, if somebody uh, wants uh, to give a reaction uh, um, to, the, to the panel. Hello, thank you, thank you, Mr. Defa. Thank you, all panelists. Thank you for for the invitation and for the possibility to hear, uh, for the possibility to present the the ideas of the business sector. Uh, I think that I'm speaking for all the business sector of the region when I say that infrastructure is a dire need for for all the economies of the region. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of discussions have been done saying that we are going towards a common market, but it's very difficult to have a common market when we don't have uh, infrastructure that will support the free flow of ideas, of goods, of people, which is one of the basis of the basic pillars of the foundations of the European Union. So I think infrastructure is something that is very important uh, for, for all of us and uh, it's not important how it's done if the countries are doing it uh, themselves, which not always works, as, as we know. Uh, if it's done through some European fund, funds, if it's done through some private uh, companies with concessions, but infrastructures is, is very important. Uh, the Corridor 8 is almost non-existent in Albania and North Macedonia. There is a part in Bulgaria that's working, but that's it. And I'm not speaking about uh, roads, highways, but also uh, railways, uh, which, is, which is also something that we are probably in the 19th century by, by the level of, of availability of rail transport in the region. Uh, so I think that uh, we must uh, push this agenda forward uh, to, to the, the European Union, to, to all the partners of, of the region, to all the allies that we have, so that this is done as soon as possible. Uh, because, as, as uh, Mrs. Uh, Bregu said, that we have free roaming, but nobody will take five hours to go to Tirana from Skopje so that he can use the, the free roaming there. Uh, another thing that I think that is important for the region is the sense of, um, of uh, let's say, participation in the EU economically, because uh, we are often, let's say, left aside as, uh, as um, any other country anywhere in the world, although we're, if not in the EU, we're next door neighbors. Some of the safeguard measures that were imposed in the, in the past several years have uh, in some way hit us, and in this, uh, I would say, a clash of, of uh, titans, we are collateral damage because we are treated as any other country. And I'm afraid that this um, decarbonization that is forthcoming will, will also have a big impact if the EU doesn't uh, treat us as, as uh, let's say, close uh, neighbors or, uh, or uh, let's say, allies in, in this process of decarbonization. The, the, the forthcoming uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism will also affect the, the economies of the region. And, if we are left on, our, on, on ourselves, this may be uh, a big economic burden and for somebody even it would mean uh, closing the activities, which is something I don't think that anybody wants. Thank you. This would be my, my intervention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, one more, but uh, then we should go. Okay, from, uh, uh, from Ecolog, right? So, yes, okay. yes. In uh, two roles, Ecolog is a platinum sponsor, but also as a rector of Southeast European University. I just want to thank all the panelists and their discussion, but just to underline a very important issue that was mentioned from our colleagues as an infrastructure needs, I will add as a superstructure needs. So education, culture, and human capital, it's needed a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, clear plea. And uh, we uh, have uh, still some... Sorry. Sorry. I... Oh. Hands. Hands. Okay, sorry, sorry. I, I... 
did not see you. It's very dark. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador Miloš Pritsa, Ambassador at large from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Just uh, uh, very, very quickly, uh, regarding, the, uh, uh, regarding the infrastructure, regarding the uh, upswing in our economies, uh, all the measures that we have heard uh, that are in preparation and uh, also taking place at the moment are uh, very positive and uh, moving uh, us toward the right direction. There is, no, there is no doubt about that. But frankly speaking, without massive investment by the EU uh, into the infrastructure in our countries, you, you can look at just the uh, IPA 3 with 14.1 billion or 14.3 billion uh, uh, euros for the period from t uh, 1st of January this year till uh, 2027. When you just divide, Turkey is also, uh, uh, also included in this. When you divide to the years, when you divide to the countries, it's not something that will make a really decisive change on the ground. We need a real Marshall Plan regarding that. Just to remind everyone here, that during the, during, that was for many years, ECB, European Central Bank, for, for several years, every month printed 80 billion euros, which is so-called quantitative easing, 80 billion euros per month. We need much more to really move forward fastly regarding the infrastructure, but also what we heard from, uh, from others here for upgrading our other services like education, like, uh, like uh, health care and other things. We, that means that these things that are now, uh, we are having as a recipients of, 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 uh, of, uh, of this assistance, we very much appreciate that. It's very nice, but that is not going to make any significant upswing to our states and our brain drain to will continue indefinitely thank you very much thank you for this position and i turn back uh, to uh, the panel so uh, this is a moment uh, where you might want to uh, react to uh, uh, what you heard from the audience uh, and also maybe challenge positions taken support uh, compliment etc who wants to uh, Go ahead. Challenge the necessity for more investments. Nobody, you know, I was just thinking, who can challenge the necessity for more investments? Yes. I don't think that any of us would really dare to say that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank also for the intervention made by the uh, participants. Uh, Yes, uh, infrastructure. Yes, we need all structural reforms. Yes, we have the initiatives. But uh, we also uh, need, uh, in this kind of conference, just to put point, uh, the, the leadership and commitment and the credibility of all these reforms. Actually, after we leave this conference, a day after we go to our offices, we need to follow up on this and to coordinate these policies. And just I uh, will add on this, that there are several initiatives and funds uh, that we need for the region. We need to work after these uh, uh, projects to get done, like the, the roaming that have been discussed for several years. And now today we have this operational. We need this infrastructure, but uh, human capital uh, on the other side, we we need to make sure that these policies, joint policies of cooperation, uh, work real in, uh, in practice. And uh, take the opportunity, while well, this is a conference of cooperation with the PRESPA forum reflecting this, uh, the initiative, the need, we also have to reflect back on Brussels, to our colleagues and friends in Brussels, that uh, the delay in the process has a cost. And this has a cost on commitment, on the credibility of the process, even in financing. When we talk about finances, we are less 
uh, stable, less uh, sustainable. So, and the private sector legitimately looks at the figures because at the end of the day, they, they are on their own in terms of their own business and they take all the challenges. So, uh, without taking further, uh, because of the time we will have later, I just want to, to say this, that yes, we should, we are doing our part, but we should be together. And togetherness means uh, that uh, all uh, players and partners uh, work, work together, as I said earlier. And please, uh, also the, uh, the, the suggestion for our colleagues in, in EU, I know that they are later on on the panels, but also we should have here, I know Ms. Brego represents the regional initiative, but we have to have our friends from, from Europe as well. Thank you. Thank you. Now a friend from the U <laughs> U.S. Yeah. You Thanks very much. Ahead. You know, investment's a great thing. Everybody likes that. It's, it's good, it's useful, it's constructive. Uh, but, but it can also focus on, on investment and the desire for investment can be a way for leaders to absolve themselves of responsibility as well. The idea that salvation somehow needs to come from the outside. And I, I can't count the number of times that, that leaders across the Western Balkans have said to me, you, Matt, you, the United States, deliver for us, please, investments by American business, as though American business is responsive to orders from the United States government, which is <laughs> not the way this works. Um, and, and what I, I regularly and consistently tell folks here is take responsibility for your own futures, take responsibility for your own destiny, take the actions in those areas that you can control. Transparency, good governance, a strong judiciary, accountability, the money will come. There is money sloshing around the international system looking for places that it can go and invest and make a reasonable return. And it is up to the countries of the Western Balkans, it's up to the leaders of the Western Balkans to create climates that are conducive to that kind of international investment. And when that is secured, the money will follow. It's got to be cart before the horse. Excuse me, horse before the cart. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Fatmiya Bitiki. No, uh, actually, I was probably I needed to talk in, before you. <laughs> because what we, what we, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we actually heard is that, uh, yeah, we, we probably, all of us, we raised several things, and, but most of them are effects, they are not causes. We are talking on poor infrastructure, and that's the effect of not doing it for 30 years. We are talking on fighting corruption, because for 30 years no one actually fighted the corruption, and obviously that's the cause of the problems. We are talking on being uh, open, having good governance, transparent accountability, and that's because actually that happened before. And I think that uh, today we have to raise the, the issue. What we have to do, or to take and stay, as a, uh, as a decision makers, in order to address all the causes, because everything else will come afterwards. And I do not fully agree when we approach towards the Europeans or others, please bring us funds, because we have to do our homework here. We have to fight really the corruption. We have to show that we are able for good governance, being transparent, accountable, creating the, the system, creating the policies, and afterwards the funding will be used in a more efficient and effective way. And actually for 30 years Western Balkan has suffered on using in a more, in less efficient and effective way the resources that were actually pledged in Western Balkan 6. I usually want to say starting from the domestic resources. In our country, in last 30 years, annual budget can be counted with billions, more one, than 100 billion. At the end of the day, we are still talking of a road not built it of 100 million. That's only 1% mm -hmm. of the budget that we have had for 30 years. And that's not because we didn't have the resources, but probably they went somewhere else. And it is about us today 
to do our homework and actually create the space that Platinum Room sponsors will be safer and trustful about what we do in order to invest. And then, probably tomorrow, we might speak easier if we have actually overcome all these causes that are jeopardizing our future. Thank you. Thank you so much. A, a very short one, and yes. then we are set. <laughs> yeah. First applause for the last two. Just to, to, to tell a joke about uh, the role of the infrastructure in the economy. After the building the highway between Pristina and Tirana, the citizens in Kosovo that wanted to sell a house, they say, I sell a house in prison that is one hour and a half from the sea. So the role of the highway is really very important. And we hope that we'll have some understanding from the EU and the money is printed there to be uh, dedicated to this very important uh, uh, and crucial investment in the region. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Um, this brings... Uh, you... Of course, I can't say no to the lady. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't see you, so you were so close. No, no problem. Um, yeah, thank you, I'll keep it brief. I should have spoken before uh, some of you too. <laughs> and I'd just like to reiterate the um, uh, limited absorptive capacities. And that is uh, both due to inefficient, uh, inefficient civil service, due to corruption, lack of rule of law, and various reasons. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I cannot really say that we don't need more support. I think, um, I think we as countries, we as policymakers need to do uh, what's on our hands, but also seek more support and uh, make best, be better use of it than we have done so far. There's one particular area that um, concerns me, particularly the, as ministers of uh, economy, uh, with energy in my, my portfolio. <laughs> and. Um, I have to be um, perhaps a bit egoist here and uh, say that um, uh, we particularly need support in the area of decarbonization. We need support in uh, planning decarbonization, no, in financing, knowing how much it will cost each of our countries, which are the technical and financial um, financial uh, challenges that we have, and then how to, how to actually get there. And this is something that disproportionately, I would say, affects our countries, uh, being rather late with limited technical capacities, with, but uh, also with uh, limited financial capacities. And this is one area where I think particularly, regardless of all the other uh, critiques, is something that we need EU support from. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, mm, now it's time for the uh, coffee break. Uh, again, a big thank you to the speakers, to the uh, discussant, uh, and uh, I hope you have a, a good refreshments. But as I said, I think the most important will be the personal exchange. And uh, just a last point for the speakers. The speakers of part one and the speakers to come for part two, there is the moment of the family photo. So uh, uh, you are guided somewhere out there to make the family photo. So enjoy the break and please be back in time. Uh, um, 10 45 sharp. Thank you.